Next I'm going to plug this UPS into my computer to change some internal calibration settings, factory calibration settings. And to do that I need to communicate with this DB9 port which uses RS-232 communication. In Windows that's uh, called a COM port. Uh, a lot of computers don't have a port like this anymore. If you don't have that you can get a USB to uh, serial adapter um, to communicate with that port or or you have a use for that old computer that's still sitting in the closet somewhere. Uh, this one does have a USB port also, but I don't know if you can actually use that to change the calibration settings. Um, there are some other limited things you can do with that, but I won't be discussing that here. So, I need to bring this unit over to my computer, since uh, I'm going to be using my desktop computer with a serial port in it. And these batteries probably weigh 60 pounds a piece, and I don't want to haul them over there. So. I mentioned that these UPS's will not power up without a battery and since I don't want to haul these batteries over to my computer uh, I'm going to use a little trick that you can do to power these up without a battery. One way you can do that is uh, with that jump start method that I mentioned earlier but there actually is an easier way to do it. Um, <clears throat> so let me turn this on just for demonstration purposes here. Right now it is uh, connected to my battery, battery is plugged in, and uh, I have the power cord over here connected to this power strip. It's been uh, charging my batteries for the last 10 minutes or so. And uh, now I'm going to bring this over to my computer to film the next segment. So you can power this up just once without the battery, it won't work twice. Um, if you want to power it up again then you'll need to put a battery in, at which point you can repeat the process. But uh, if you turn the unit off by hitting the off button, it is not actually off at this point. So turn it off, come over here, unplug it from the wall, I'll turn off my power strip. And uh, it doesn't make any noise anymore, has all appearances of being off, but it is not. You have to press and hold this off button, and it'll click one more time. So now it is off. But uh, all the capacitors inside are still charged up to full battery voltage. So, as long as you do this within the next hour or so, they will hold enough charge to power the unit up once. So, now we can disconnect the battery, pull that out, and I'll haul this over to my computer. At which point I can plug it into the wall and turn it on, and uh, I won't need a battery at all, which is convenient. The UPS is connected to my computer through the uh, APC, special APC cable, to the serial port in my desktop here. And I have... Uh, PowerShoot Plus, version 5.2.3, it's extremely old, but uh, the newer versions don't support the COM port anymore, uh, they only support network or USB. So I scrounged around on the APC website and this version, 5.2.3 of PowerShoot Plus, is available in their FTP archives. Anybody can download it. So I have this connected to, uh, to my UPS and uh, Let's uh, get connected to it. Um, it's emitting a chirping noise right now because there's no battery pack. Uh, we're going to fix that here. So we'll attach to this one. And uh, it's kind of neat little software. It tells you a bunch of things about your UPS. You can change what these graphs are. You can uh, log information every so often. Um, it'll tell you what the last time the battery was replaced, etc. But you can play around with these if you're interested. But uh, I am just interested in shutting up that annoying beeper. Uh, let's see, where is that? Operating parameters, it's not in there. Shut down, here we are. Under the shutdown parameters, uh, there's things in here you can change. I'm not really interested in changing any of them except this one. UPS audible warning. I'll change that to never beep. And there we go, it stopped beeping. And the UPS will now never make a sound ever again. Um, I think there are a few cases where it will, a severe overload or things like that. But aside from that, it's not going to make any more noise. And that's really good for this when I'm trying to convert a UPS into an inverter because the UPS automatically calculates how much battery life is remaining based on load and uh, its remembered battery capacity. 
In this case, I may have a generator of some sort hooked up to it, or I may have a very large battery bank. And I don't want it estimating that the battery is about dead and chirping at me constantly. So this way it, uh, it won't make any noise and no one will be any the wiser that uh, the battery is or is not almost dead. So that part's done. Uh, the next thing I want to do is recalibrate it so that it will support a higher output current. Right now it's limited to 980 watts from the factory. And I want to tell it that uh, um, basically I want to raise that limit. Instead of 980 watts, I want uh, about 1,500 watts out of it. And to do that, we need to go into the factory calibration settings. If you look up uh, APC Smart UPS, Smart Protocol, on the internet, there's quite a few different parameters you can change. I'm just going to change one here. Uh, that is the... Uh, um, well, let me back up a little bit. On my previous UPS video, I had modified the circuit board itself to bypass the current sense transformer, and I'd showed where that was on this unit also. Uh, in this case, since this is a smart UPS, I don't have to do that. I can just modify it through software, and it's a lot more flexible, and it still maintains some of its features. For example, uh, it will still be able to tell when there's an overload. If I put 1600 watts on it, it'll detect an overload and shut down. Uh, which is handy, then we don't don't run into problems. But to do that, we need a simple terminal program. I'm just going to use HyperTerminal. This is what comes with Windows XP. Uh, but uh, in order to use this, I first have to disconnect from uh, PowerShoot. Um, on this computer, I'm just going to open up Task Manager and end the UPS service. That'll free up the COM port. Um, your computer may be different. But uh, now we're ready to connect, and if we go to Properties, uh, COM1 is what I have it connected to. To communicate with these, the smart protocol is 2400 baud, 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit, and no flow control. So I'll set it for 2400, 8N1, and uh, connect. And now we're talking to the UPS through the COM port. There's a number of different commands you can enter here, um, like L. Capital L tells me my line voltage, it's 120.9 volts. Uh, but uh, the only one that we're really interested in here is to recalibrate the load sense, and that is a capital P, which will tell us the output power. Right now, the output, the sensed output power is 0 watts, 0, .0 watts, uh, percent, I'm sorry, this is in percentage. 0% uh, because there's no load on it, I don't have anything connected right now. So we need to enter the factory calibration mode on it. And to do that, you press number one, wait three seconds, and press one again. And I'll show you what it does if you do that. One, wait three seconds or more, and then press one again. And it says PROG. That's for program mode. And to use program mode, we're going to use the capital P command. So type in capital P. And now if I use the plus and minus buttons on my keyboard, it spits out some numbers for me. So plus, minus, plus, minus. Uh, F1 is the current setting. And F1 is the sensitivity of the current gain on the current gain sensor. Uh, it doesn't, uh, isn't really important for you to understand how that works. But uh, basically, I want to increase the capacity by 50% of this unit. This particular one is F1. Every unit will be different because this is factory calibrated. They'll all be set to 980 watts, but due to physical differences in every unit, this number could be quite a bit different. Um, in this case, it's F1, though. F1 is in hexadecimal. That's base 16, something that's good to know, but you don't really need to uh, know how that works to, uh, to change this setting properly. <coughs> um, so just open up whatever utility you want to convert here. And uh, F1, if I convert that into decimal, which is base 10, this number system that we're all used to, that corresponds to 241. <clears throat> so I want to increase the capacity of this unit by 50%. So it'll be 1.5 times as much output power. And since this is the sensitivity number, that means that I want to, if I invert 1.5, I want it to only sense 66 or 67% of the load that's really there. 
uh, because if I take uh, 1500 watts and multiply that by 67%, I get approximately 980 watts. So, so 67% is what we want to set this number to. It was originally F1, so I'll type in F1 again, convert that to decimal, 241. If I multiply that now by 0 0.67, I get 161. I convert that back into hexadecimal base 16, and it's A1. So I want to set this number to A1. So we'll type in capital P, and then uh, hit the plus or minus button, in this case minus, until we get down to A1. It's probably a good, good idea to write down F1 also, the original number, just so you don't forget. But uh, minus A1. And that's it. This is now stored permanently into the unit, and it will remember this forever until you go in here and change that again. So those are the only two things that, uh, that I'm going to change here. There's many other things that you can change. I think you can even change the charge battery voltage, the float voltage, um, many other things. Uh, but I'm just going to change that. And uh, you can test this out too by uh, plugging in a load. Uh, a load that would have overloaded the unit and shut it down before. It will now be sensed as a lesser load than it really is. So what I just did is set this to 1,500 watts approximately. And uh, I can now power a 1500 watt load from it, and it won't protect itself. <clears throat> but that also means that I need to upgrade other capacities of this UPS uh, to make it a, a 1500 watt inverter. And to do that, I need to add some fan cooling to make sure that everything stays cool, even at this elevated load. <clears throat>